Good evening, it's Tom Soan, and good evening, it's Tom Soan. I've said that twice because I'm right here on my Tom Soan page, and I'm right here, there, on the Portsmouth Landlords page. So today, we're going to tackle everybody's questions about property, about being a landlord, and look, let's see if we can help as many people as we can, and if there's something that you know the answer to, then try and help out as well. But this is going to be live. This is a live question and answer session. Um, so hopefully we can get... Some... Now, I've already got some answers right here. So I'm really hoping that these questions that I've been asked already have some meaning with other landlords and also property investors. Do you know what? This is normally a landlord Q&A, but I've been asked a few property investment questions as well, certainly given the current situation with lockdown. And I see Matthew White's joining me. Good to see you earlier on, mate. Um, so first of all, before we get started, give me a shout just to let me know you're with me. and uh, Just let me know that I'm talking to actual people. Uh, so you can write it in the comments, just give me a thumbs up or give me a woo hey or whatever it may be and uh, then at least I know I'm talking to someone, right? Um, and forgive me for looking here and looking here. I'm generally trying to flick between the two places and there is also a bit of a delay between when you comment and when I see it or when I ask for it. Hi, Matthew. Um, lovely. So, look, what's the point of this? Well, first of all, there are questions that people have on their minds and sometimes you might not uh, have the forum or the outlet. Hi, Jody. Jody just joined us. I can see you might not have the outlet to ask your questions. Certainly, when it comes to things like being a landlord, maintenance issues, investing in property, when to invest in property, um, the eviction ban, the new stamp duty announcements. What does it all mean to you? The electrical installation reports. What does that all mean to you? And the point with all of this is that we need to share that information. And if I've got it in my head, hi, Shaney, nice to see you. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Mandy. Thanks for coming along. So the point is to all of this is if I can help you with some information about that, then brilliant. If you know the answer to any of this, then you can pop, pop it in the comments as well. We're all a community here. We're all landlords. We're all just trying to help each other. So I'm going to crack on. If you've got a question along the way, by the way, just put it in the comments, whether you're watching me on my Portsmouth Landlords Facebook group or you're on my Tom Soane page, that's OK. Um, or if you're on the Anonymous Landlord Facebook page as well, then you'll be able to see all of it. So the first question I've got is from Karen. Uh, thank you very much, Karen. And you know what? I think this is a really common question for a lot of people. So uh, let me know if this has the same meaning for you or whether you've experienced something like this. So Karen's question is, we've had some maintenance issues throughout lockdown and the tenants are withholding partial rent. What can I do? So Karen, I feel for you and I've heard this one, I must say it's got to be 20 different landlords have told me this same issue where um, they've had difficulties getting access to properties. I'm presuming this is what your problem is, where you've had issues getting into the property or you've had issues finding the right contractor during lockdown. Um, and the tenants have said, well, you're not doing this. I'm not paying rent. That's a very common problem. So Karen, I guess I can only really answer these questions as what I would do as a landlord. And the first thing I would say is that the tenant legally cannot withhold rent cannot do it. They are in a contract with you. That AST that you have is a contract. So um, so make sure that you inform the tenant. If you're self-managing, make sure you inform the tenant, listen, I will get this maintenance issue sorted, but you are in a contract and you cannot withhold the rent. That's not your decision to make. It also gives, if you go past two months worth of arrears, by the way, Karen, then that gives you grounds for a section eight notice. Now, I'll come back to the uh, Section 8 notice and the evictions. Hi, Dell. Good to see you, mate. Long time no see. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you a wave. How about that? I'll give you a wave, Jody. There you go. And I'm going to give you a wave as well. Matt, there you go. Lovely. <laughs> anyway, so back to the point. So look, you will, if the tenant becomes more than two months in arrears, then you will have grounds to serve them a Section 8 notice, which in normal times, that gives them two weeks to vacate the property. And if they don't, you can then apply to the courts for an eviction. However, at the moment, there is an eviction ban. So I will come back to that. 
Um, and I'm going to give you a, one of the questions I've been asked later on is about the band. So uh, I'll come back to that as well. And by the way, if you've got any questions in the meantime about being a landlord, certainly in lockdown, if your tenants aren't paying the rent or you're having problems with maintenance, just pop a question in the comment and I'll get to it. This is a live Q&A, so uh, be nice. And look, if I don't know the answer, then I'll just tell you I don't know the answer and we'll find it out after this live. Um, but yeah, so if your tenant falls more than two months in arrears, you can give them Section 8 notice, which is two weeks. Um, however, now we get onto the maintenance issues themselves. If the tenants go to the council, the council might put a council order to you to get that work done, depending on what the work is that's required. And if they do that, that's when you can get into some difficulty because then you're you're legally obliged to carry out that work. And if you don't do it, you are probably going to get penalised. Now, then it can get even worse. There is such thing as the HHSRS, which is the Housing Health and Safety Rating System. They always name these things in such catchy ways. They're brilliant. But if you fall foul of a HHSRS, or if you do a HHSRS check and part of your property, for example, is hazardous, then that's when you can get into quite serious trouble yourself. So, Karen, my advice to you is go and find a contractor that is working because can't find a contractor. If you say to a judge, I, can't, I couldn't find a contractor that was working, it's not an excuse. You have to supply or you have to fix any work that, that causes a hazard to the tenant. You have to do that. Things like heating, hot water, utilities, that sort of stuff, you have to. You have to make sure that property is habitable and it's not hazardous. So uh, find a find a contractor that is working. Look, hey, put uh, put the uh, question about contractors in the, the Portsmouth Landlords Facebook group. They'll have someone in there. Somebody will know a contractor that is working. So if you can't get access from the tenant, now this is a different thing. So I, uh, hopefully I've covered that. If you can't get a contractor that is working, can't be an excuse, I'm afraid, Karen. Sorry to say it. But if you if you can get a contractor, but you can't get access with the tenant, then record all of the attempts that you've made with the tenant in writing to access the property. If the tenant just isn't letting you in, then tough shit, Mr. and Mrs. Tenant. You can't not pay your rent when you won't allow the contractor or the landlord in to fix the problem. Tough luck. So make sure that you document all of those attempts with the tenant. I would even say to the tenant, listen, I've tried to access the property, I've tried to help you, but you're not letting me in. So you are now withholding the rent. I know it means a cash, a cash flow, excuse me. I know it means a cash flow problem, Karen, but but you know what? You've got to do something. You've got to take action here. Don't be nice, don't be nice about it, be tough. And if you can't get a contractor, get a contractor. Get on the Portsmouth Landlords page, uh, all group, or just ask me. Do you know what? Actually, it's probably easier. Just send, send me a message, Karen. I'll connect you up with contractors that are working. So hopefully that helps. And um, hey, has anyone got any landlords that are current? Uh, sorry, any contractors in the local Portsmouth area that are currently working? Yes, that is very true. That's another thing, Karen. Let me just add to that. Matthew's just made a very good point that the tenants can now sue you directly as a landlord if there is a, uh, any deficiencies in the property hazards, uh, anything that is a problem under the HHSRS. So definitely remember that. Um, so let's, oh, who's this? So Hannah, what about how serious the maintenance is? Have the tenant given photo evidence? Can you do an assessment on the situation and how serious it is? Very good point, Hannah. Look, you've got to try and collect all of the information you can from the tenant. If it's a serious problem and the tenant thinks it's serious, but you don't, you need to download the HHSRS checklist and just have a look on there to see if it's a problem or not. Well, no, it is a problem, but see if it's a serious problem or not. That's the key. Um, Warren says, I've been struggling to get access to conduct an EICR because the tenant is shielding and preventing access. Yeah, do you know what? That's a common one, mate, if I'm honest with you. Um, do you know, if you're going to if you're going to go for an EICR, there's a couple of things I would give you because I've been asked another question, actually, by um, by Sharon. 
yeah, Sharon, uh, who's basically said, should I get an EICR now, the electrical installations condition report? Should I get that now or should I wait until next year when I actually need it? And Matt, uh, sorry, and Warren has also said, I've been struggling to get access to carry out an electrical installation condition report. Again, really catchy names. I love these um, because the tenant is shielding. So I would go back. There's two sides to that. Number one, if the tenant is shielding, you need to document the evidence to say that the tenant the, the, the tenant has said that they're shielding and they will not allow access. Because you ever, if you ever got to a court in front of a judge, then the judge is going to say exactly that. What evidence have you got that you tried to get access and you weren't able to get access? These are strange situations, I must say. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for joining. Hi, Helen. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, these are strange times, right? So if a judge comes along or stands in front of you and says, no, you should have still gone in, then, well, that just won't happen because that's just impossible. If a tenant is shielding lawfully and is required to, then, you know, what can you do? How can you gain access? However, if you can't get access, have you asked the tenant to go to the garden or have you asked the tenant to um, uh, go out of the property? I'm sure they've left the property at some point. If they haven't, and they definitely are 100%, self-isolating it's just ribena this time by the way um, and they are self-isolating then i'm pretty sure that if you ever went to court about it then there wouldn't be a leg to stand on if you didn't have the eicr i trust warren i've seen your name on these before and i trust that you've been doing everything you can to actually get into the property and um and it's just literally a case that the tenant is preventing access so to wrap that all up you need to Get all the evidence you possibly can that you have been trying all reasonable methods to get into that property. Now, let's have a look. Matthew has said, or you can ask the tenant to complete an online survey. That will determine if there are deficiencies in the property. Safehouseinfo.com costs $4.99 and provides a report and a letter to landlord. Matthew, you're going to come and join my teammate. That was a great answer. So, Warren, just to see in the comments below on, I think this is on the uh, Portsmouth Landlords Facebook group. Um, one, of, uh, one of the people on there has said, ask the tenant to complete an online survey that will determine if there are deficiencies in the property. This, it's safehouseinfo.com, costs for, oh, sorry, this is for Karen's question. I think this is about maintenance issues. Can you let me know if I'm right there, Matthew? Um, so it's 499 safehouseinfo.com. The tenant, if they are self-isolating or anything like that, then they can carry out a, uh, a online survey to see if there, um, there are any deficiencies. So cheers for that, mate. That's a really good answer. Uh, Helen Pass, sorry, I'm in the Northwest. I guess you're talking about any local contractors. That's all right, Helen, we'll let you off. You all talk really funny up there anyway. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks very much, Matthew. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so Warren, I hope that helps, mate. It's probably not the best advice in the world, but really you're quite limited on answers. Like I say, all you've got to do is get all the evidence you possibly can to say you've reason you've made reasonable attempts with no harassment to get in front of that. Oh, sorry, to get the contractor into the property. Mandy, what's Mandy saying? So Mandy says, I've got a couple of tenanted flats that I want to sell. They're in the same block. Would it be better to sell them both at the same time or stagger the sales? So Mandy, can I ask you if they're the same, pretty much the same flat? They're both like very similar two bedroom flats or something like that. Um, I would... I would first of all check out your capital gains tax liability because I don't know the values of those properties. By the way, if you want me to value them, then just drop me a message privately. We don't need to get into it here. But if you want me to give you a proper value for them, then I can help out. Um, awesome, Warren. Yeah, look, I mean, what we've got to do, Warren, just quickly back to you, is make sure that if you do ever have to go in front of a judge, that you can show, look, judge, that's what their name is. I guess all judges are called judge, right? Look, judge, I definitely tried to... Oh, they're both similar. Thanks, Mandy. Yeah, I definitely tried to get into that property and here's all the evidence I can provide. Let me know how you get on, mate. Keep me posted on that. And if it's if you find a, a good solution, then maybe we'll share it with the rest of the landlords. Um, so they are very similar. Great. So ignoring capital gains tax liability. Let me know separately if you want me to value. Um, but capital, gain, capital gains aside and tax aside... I would actually advertise one of them 
but show every single applicant that applies for that one property both properties and then let them decide what they want because if you it's like the old rule isn't it it's the old sales rule if you give if you give one person two choices they're going to choose one of them so advertise one get every single person that applies to see that property to go and uh, view both properties i mean your agent should be doing this anyway this is a state agency 101 um, do you know what? I'll give you a story, actually. We're just about to advertise six flats in the same block for sale. There are three one beds and three two beds. So we're only going to advertise one of each, but then show every single applicant, every buyer, every single flat um, so that then they can choose. You're more likely to get a quicker sale because people will feel like I've got to choose one of these. So, yes, definitely sell them both at the same time, but don't advertise them both at the same time. If your estate agent says anything different, get rid of them. Um, and in fact, if you're in Portsmouth, then uh, if you want to drop me a message, I might be able to help you with that a bit more. Um, but also, ah, Mandy, I tell you what, there's also a service called the Landlord to Landlord Property Sales Service. If they're tenanted right now, then you can just pass them on to another landlord. It's a service that I'm offering. So drop me a message. I don't mean this to be a sales plug, by the way. This is pure, I promise you, this is nothing more than a Q&A, but I've got a landlord to landlord property sales service. I promise I won't mention anything about that anyway. If you've got a tenanted property, sorry, that was Mark Hogan trying to ring me there. Cheers. Uh, if you've got properties that are currently tenanted, then uh, yeah, we'll help out with that. Um, blah, 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 blah. So Hannah, thank you, Hannah. The, the tenant, tenant can't withhold rent if they haven't put the landlord on formal notice about the maintenance. Thank you very much. Hole in the roof versus drippy tap. Yeah, we got it. Uh, Warren's got it. Lovely. Matthew Drain. I have been told to isolate due to medical reasons. And as of the 6th of July, we are allowed out, but still no visitors in at the moment. Looks as though from the 1st of August, all restrictions lifted for shielded persons. Brilliant. I think, Matt, you're probably helping out the uh, question about uh, being able to get into the property, right? Getting access to the property, which really helps. So who was that? That was, um, crikey, I'm getting really lost with these questions here, right? Uh, so that was Karen, I think. Karen had the problem with maintenance. Um, uh, was it? Let me check here. Someone give me a hand, will you? Here we go. So this is Warren. Sorry, it's back to Warren, isn't it? Shielding and preventing access. Yeah, so Warren, looks like 1st of August, all restrictions are going to be lifted for shielding shielded persons. So that might help. Oh, here we go. You've already said thank you. Remember, I've got a bit of a delay on your comments and when I answer and when I see them. So stick with me. But it looks like Matt and Warren have got this covered. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for joining. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining. Um... Perfect. Right. The next question I've got here is, oh, by the way, if you've got any questions, just fire them out. Either I'll answer them or we've got some great guys in the group here who seem to know their stuff. So. Actually, here's a property investment question. I'm looking to buy a new investment property over the next couple of months, but I'm debating whether to wait until 2021. What do you think from Lee? Thanks very much, Lee. I didn't get your surname here, Lee. So um, I'll hopefully you're watching this or you will watch this at some point. But really common question. I'm going to give you a wave, Ryan. I'm going to give you a wave, Jeff. There you go. Lovely stuff. Um, yeah, really common question. Look, there's a bit of uncertainty at the moment, is there? Isn't there? People think that the prices are going to shoot down. Other people think they need to invest now. Other people are scared of investing in property now. So what do I think? Look, I mean, this is, a, this is my opinion. Go with it if you want. Don't go with it if you don't. But I think property prices in my area are going to stay fairly steady. If anything, there will be a small increase now over the next three months. And I'll explain why in a second. But I think then we'll see a slight dip back down to where we were. And then I think it's going to continue rising up as normal. And I'll explain why I think that. First of all, I think that Coming out of lockdown, there has been evidently a big surge on property purchases. Now, I think that is a blip. I think that's a spike. And I think it will last for about three months. Good. Yeah, right. Stamp duty. Thank you. Um, I'll come on to the stamp duty stuff in a minute. 
But there is going to be a spike right now in property prices. I've already seen statistically a reduction in the difference between asking price and sale agreed price. So that's positive. That means the market is going up. But that is short term. Because I think once this spike comes back down, I think we're going to go like this. If you want a graph, I think it's going to go zoop like that in the next three months. And it's going to drop down to here, then come back to here, and then continue to rise. Now, that's because once that, I guess the bottleneck of buyers that have been stuck in lockdown or people that have decided, no, enough's enough. I want a garden. This beautiful weather we've had in lockdown. I wanted to be able to enjoy that in a better garden or a better area. I want to be closer to family. That's what's happening right now. When that dies off, and there are more people that see all these property sales going through and then they think, oh, I'll get on the market. Right now, we've got less properties on the market and more demand. That's why. When all those properties come onto the market and then there's more properties than buyers, then demand is going to be like that. And that's when property prices will start to come down again. And then I think as of, the ne as of next year, January, February time, that's when it's going to start rising again. But the question is, should I buy now or should I wait? Well, I think a property deal is a property deal. It doesn't matter whether you buy it now and then it reduces in a couple, by a couple of percent this year and then goes back up next year. A deal is a deal. It's still got to tick your boxes. If you're buying, to, if you're buying a property that you're going to flip and sell, then just offer a couple of percent less because that's where I think the market's going to go. Overall, a couple of percent. There are going to be places that are going to suffer more. And if you're in other parts of the country, then, um, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll offer him one of your flats, Mandy. Good question. <laughs> Great comment. So, yeah, if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy now and sell it, offer 2%, maybe 3% less than you would normally offer. If you're going to keep it, then remember, you're not going to sell it tomorrow. So you might as well hang on to it. And, and the deal is the deal. Hang on to it. You're not going to be selling it this year anyway. So the price, the value of the property should still continue over time. Um, geez, I'm getting emails now from, from people asking more questions. I'll try my best to keep up. If I don't keep up with all your questions, then I will certainly do more videos about your questions or I'll contact you directly. Um, thank you very much, everyone, by the way, for getting involved. So, uh, so look. Mortgage rates are still quite low at the moment as well. So that's worth remembering. So I'm not a mortgage advisor, by the way, but if I was putting my property investor hat on, um, then I would say that you get a shorter term fixed rate right now because I think uh, I think you can get something like three and a half percent at the moment. Um, that's I've just been offered a three and a half percent job for two year fixed. I think that's a fair rate given the uncertainty at the moment. Take a short rate, two years, and then in two years, remortgage, get as much cash out you can uh, as you can, and then either stick in a longer rate if you're more comfortable with that or whatever. But I'm not a mortgage advisor. That's not advice. That's just me telling you what I would do or what I am doing right now. Um, and also, it's going to sound really silly, but if you're doing a flip, then make sure that the contractors are working because you're going to need a plaster. Hi, Kerry. Thanks for joining. Here's a wave. Make sure, because you're going to need a plasterer, you're going to need a builder, a brickie, a carpenter, um, you're going to need a kitchen fitter, you're going to need all these people uh, over the next month or so that are going to make sure that they're able to, so make sure they're able to do the job on time without, um, thanks Hannah, um, yeah, so make sure they're able to do the job once you've bought the property, because you don't want to be sitting on that property for a couple of months without being able to do anything. Next thing, find out why they're selling. And it sounds really obvious, right? But if they're selling a property because uh, they've got a tenant in there and the tenant's not paid rent for six months and they can't afford to keep it, there's a deal there. They're a distress, distressed seller. You might be able to pick up a really good property deal and, uh, and keep the tenant in there. Maybe if they are a good tenant, they are paying rent, but the landlord just needs to get rid of it. You might be able to keep the tenant. Remember, the, uh, the landlord to landlord property sales service, and I promised I wouldn't plug that again, but I've done it. Oh, well, um, I'll beep it out or something. But uh, and also, if you you might be able to offer somebody a lease option, because if you're maybe this isn't the right time to, to explain exactly what a lease option is, but I'm doing two at the moment. And it's an opportunity for a landlord to um, get the income that they that they want without losing um, 
I guess really, and then the buyer has the opportunity to buy the property at some point in the next five years. That's the option. And you give them a guaranteed rent for five years. That's the lease. And the landlord then gets their income each month. They're able to then uh, walk away from the property, so to speak. But we'll do more on lease options another time, I think. So it's a pretty big option. But it's a pretty, pretty big subject, but it's a really good way to make money in property very easily. Um, and the next thing I'd probably say about buying now or waiting doesn't matter. Stick to the plan. Whatever your boxes are that need to be ticked, make sure every property that you see ticks those boxes. Now, for me, the first box I look at is the yield. It's got to have a minimum, absolute minimum of 12% yield, return on investment, whatever you want to call it. I mean, yield and return on investment is different, but we'll do that another time. But minimum 12%. Ideally, I want 25%. I want more than that if I can get it, but the box still has to be ticked. It must return a minimum of 12%. If it doesn't return 12%, it doesn't even get a look in. So, um, and then look, anything above that is fantastic. If you're one of my clients, by the way, you better not, you better not miss any one of those boxes out. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's the next question here? What can I do to prepare for the eviction ban to be lifted? Right, so... Uh, that's from Matt. Cheers, Matt. Um, and by the way, if you... Sally Lawson is watching. Hi, Sally. Here's a wave. So what can I do right now to prepare for that eviction ban being lifted? My immediate advice is... Wow. Oh, thanks, Hannah. I don't know if that's for me or the fact that Sally Lawson's joined. It's probably the Sally Lawson joining. Um, but look, what can you do? We're not too far away from that eviction ban being lifted, everybody. But I would say apply for your apply for the eviction now. Look, you can apply for it now. The courts will still process that application, but they won't start processing your application until the end of the month. Uh, sorry, it's, it's next month, isn't it? But what you can do is prepare for it because the courts are going to have, I think, about three months of backlog. So when they come out... Uh, when they come out of this ban and they start processing your application, that's when they're going to pencil you in for the next available slot. I think there's going to be three months minimum before anybody who applies now gets to be seen by the courts. So prepare for that. That might mean three more months of no rent. It might mean 12% yield minimum. Lol. I think we're probably calculating... Uh, different types of yield Hannah <laughs> you're probably calculating fake yield I don't mean that as an insult by the way that's just what I call it uh, but that's a whole new thing just google search Tom Sohn true yield you'll see it anyway um, so I think apply now anyway get that application into the court and then once the ban is lifted that's when you'll be slotted into the next available appointment and I warn you it might take a few months so by the way I'm also on my my Portsmouth Landlords page here. Uh, this actually might be my own Facebook page. And I'm on the uh, Portsmouth Landlords one here. So, so forgive me if I'm uh, looking at two different spots here. As you can see, I've got you all here. Hi, everyone. So, next question, please. And sorry, I will get to all your questions. I didn't think I'd be getting this many. This one is from Sharon. Oh, that's the EICR one. That's fine. Could you issue a Section 21 notice now to kick things off? Absolutely yes. Uh, same rules apply. The, the notice will start when the eviction is when the eviction ban is lifted, but that's when you can uh, so it's like a minimum period if you like. So you can serve it now and then it will kick off at that time. But you can apply to the courts if you can go that way right now. Have you got someone Warren that you need to get out of your property? I'll, uh, there is a, is a delay between now and between when I say something and when you comment, but, um, oh, I love that Hannah. Sorry. I've only just seen your, your bit there. Hannah says if the right property comes along and it's the right deal for your investment needs, don't wait. You'll never get anywhere by not taking action. I love that. That's a headline right there. Hannah, by the way, is the uh, the lady of lettings over in Wales. Absolute phenomenon. So if you want to invest in Wales, then then see Hannah White. She's right there, look. Oh, you have, Warren. Oh, that sucks. Sorry to hear it, mate. Um, so look, has anybody got any more questions? Any got Anyone got any current situations they're dealing with? I'm just going to check through some of the comments here. Or has anyone heard of any 
problems or issues with landlording or lettings or property investment that perhaps they know of from other people. But what I will say, just to recap for anybody that's just joined us here, um, if you're having maintenance issues where you can't gain access to the property, we've been through all of that. Hi, Abe. Thanks for coming along, mate. Uh, thanks for joining Abe Rubin. Now, if you're having problems accessing a property with your tenant and they're not letting your contractors in or they're not letting you in, then just document and record every single attempt that you have made and every single response that, you, that your tenant has made to you to show that you have reasonably attempted to access the property. And think of it like this. If you ever had to sit in front of a judge and say, look, I tried, I tried, I tried. What's the judge going to want from you? They're going to want to see full evidence, start to finish, that you've tried to access the property reasonably. The next thing I said to Karen, which was right at the beginning for those that have just joined, is that not having a contractor is not an excuse. Not being able to find a contractor that's working is not an excuse for not being able to carry out essential maintenance works. Um, and there was a, a really good bit of advice coming from Matthew. Let me just grab it. Here we go. Right. The tenant can complete an online survey that will determine if there are deficiencies at the property. And if you get your pens and papers right now, it's safehouseinfo.com. And I'm saying that for the people here because I'm not too sure whether this is my Facebook page or whether this is my Facebook page or this is the Portsmouth Landlords page a group or this is the Portsmouth Landlords group. Who knows? We'll just talk to both. So, yeah, that was safehouseinfo.com. It costs 4 99 and the tenant can provide, um, can go through an online survey to see what deficiencies there are in a property, and it will provide a report and a letter to the landlord. That's awesome. Hi, Annie. Thanks for joining. There you go. And right. So then we went through, um, we were talking about property investment. Someone asked whether we should invest in property now or whether we should wait till 2021. I'll very briefly recap on that. I think there's going to be a little spike right now in property prices, only for the next two to three months. Then I think it's going to start to tail off a little bit. Then I think we're going to have a little bit of a dip. Now, some areas are going to be worse than others. I'll tell you, I'm going to predict something here. Um, and I'm happy to stand up <laughs> and fight my corner if it doesn't come off. But Portsmouth and the surrounding areas will be fine. We always are. Portsmouth and surrounding areas, the property prices are not going to come down. But elsewhere in the country, it's going to come down a little bit. But overall, next year, it will start coming back up again. So hold me to that. I'll happily... This is Portsmouth Landlords, right? So Portsmouth Landlords, yes. And you guys, if you're not in my Portsmouth Landlords group, but you are a Portsmouth Landlord, go over to here and join the group. Anywho, so, um, yeah, so I basically said invest now um, if you're keeping a property. If you're buying a property to flip, then uh, offer a couple of percent less. I'd probably say two or three percent less is a safe bet and uh, will allow for any slight dips in property. So we've got more from Matthew White. Matthew White, what a legend you are, mate. Back to the EICR issue for not being allowed access and it's needed for the renewal, the lapse... Uh, renewal the ten the tenancy uh, i'm not sure i'm following that let me just try and read it back to the eicr issue for not being allowed access and it's needed for the renewal the lapse of the tenancy into a statutory periodic tenancy not a fixed term or contractual periodic tenancy the eicr won't be needed until april 2021 yep fair point hopefully you got that uh, I think that was Warren that needed that one. So hopefully you got that, mate. Thanks for that, Matthew. Really appreciate helping out. And that's what we're all doing here. Do you know what? We're all landlords. We're all in lockdown. We're, well, I know we're coming out of it, but we're all in the same situation. And I think quite too often people look to try and fix all this stuff themselves without actually knowing what, what legislation they need to follow, what rules they need to follow, or what processes they need to follow when the answers are out there. You know, it might not even be me. I'm not proclaiming myself to be the know-all and end-all. I know my shit, but I think there are quite evidently other people that know shit too. And I think we all just need to help each other out. And, and hopefully you're all with me on that. 
You know, we don't need to look to one expert. I think actually the ultimate expert is the one that can collect information from many different sources, right? And I think if we all just pull together and share our knowledge and share our experiences together, then actually being a landlord is going to be cool again. Because at the moment, I feel like it's not so cool as it used to be. But anyway, the next one we were talking about was what can we do now to prepare for the eviction ban being lifted? If you've got to get a tenant, ban, a tenant out right now, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait. But apply to the courts now. If the tenant is more than two months in arrears, apply to the courts now. Um, oh, where's... where's Wesley Bateman, so you've uh, you've missed out on the stamp duty saving, and oh no, that sucks. Oh, you missed. So basically, if you're if you're in this group, then the port. This is my Facebook group. Then uh, War Wesley Bateman has said that he's just missed out on the the stamp duty saving that's just been announced today. I don't mean to laugh, Wes, but that's awful, isn't it? But you know what? All right. Take yourself out of it. I think this is a really positive move by the government. And what opportunities does it present to the rest of us? I think that's what we should all be looking for. It's yeah, it's gutted. Um, if you missed out on that, I missed out on it, too. But if if you if you did, um, if you, we need to look at what opportunities there are, that's what I'm trying to say not what opportunities there aren't or what we missed out on. Let's have a look at what opportunities there are. If you're buying a property to um, uh, to invest in, then there's going to be, a, you're flipping to sell, then you're going to have a bigger market because there are people that are going to be able to afford properties now. Especially if you're doing a flip and you're going to sell a place for a couple of hundred thousand and now that person who's buying the property off you doesn't need to spend six grand on stamp duty. That could be more money in your pocket. You could get a better offer because that person doesn't have to spend money on stamp duty. So try to remember that and try to look for opportunities wherever you can. Um, so look, I mean, I'm, I'm running out of questions here. <laughs> I did get a few questions by email, but I think I'll save them up now. It's 20 past eight. And uh, as you can probably tell, I'm running out of things to say. But just remember, follow my podcast. It's see what Matthew White's just said. Sorry if I keep stopping, by the way. It's because I get a comment on the uh, on the Facebook page. Um, but yeah, follow the podcast. What am I doing on the podcast? It's called The Anonymous Landlord for a reason, because I think that's the ultimate dream for any person who's interested in property investment. In fact, any person who's interested in business and property and life in general, right? I mean, I tried to make it with The Anonymous Landlord because that's what I'm doing. Because what's the point in earning tons and tons of money in property if you haven't got any time to enjoy it, right? So the whole point of the anonymous landlord is that you have everything done for you. So your entire job, Mr. and Mrs. Landlord, is to sit back, enjoy your money coming in, whilst people that do everything for you are empowered and manage every single aspect of your property business. Because that's what it is. It's a business, right? So I talk to many people, landlords, property experts, investors. Um, I also give a lot of advice and a lot of tips about property, about property investing. But where do I think I'm a little bit different? There are loads of property experts and investment courses and training. And you can spend thousands of pounds on property training, but I'm going to give it to you all for free because I'm doing it right now. I'm speaking to the people that have been doing it for years. I'm going to be doing it myself with you. I'm going to tell you about every single property deal that I do. I've got one coming up where I've just offered somebody a lease option, which is a very good way to make money without in property without having any money yourself. I mean, this one I'm hoping to get and I'm not spending a penny of my own money. So if I can get that, I want to I want you to go through it with you with me on the next podcast that I do about this or the next video I do about this. I'm going to tell you what I offered, why I offered it, how I offered it. If we negotiate with the owner, then I'll tell you about that, too. And. Um, and I want you to go along that journey with me. So, so tune into the podcast and I hopefully will see you all there. If I don't, then keep watching the videos. But until then, I think I'll do. Uh, unless anyone's got any last minute questions. What have we got here? I think stamp duty holidays. Yeah, it does, Matthew. You're right. Um, 
But what it does do as an opportunity for investors is mean that you open up your, your buyer market a bit more, don't you? Especially if you're investing in um, first, time, first time products. Uh, Hannah, I need to speak to you about lease options. Yes, I'm more than happy. I've got two on the go now. Um, they're really good fun to work out. So yeah, definitely happy to, to talk through those a bit more, especially if you've got one in mind. Uh, I'll help you put together an offer. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go and uh, have a drink and hopefully you'll all join me. Look, if that was useful in any way, then please do let me know because I do these things for free just because I find them good fun. And I'm just trying to help as many people as I can. I think we all have a responsibility to, to help each other in these situations. So um, outside of that, have a great time, everyone. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you very much for everybody who joined me. And I will speak to you all soon. This might take me a few seconds to come off of live. But there you go. End this live video. Catch everyone soon.